The Primus presents how Kuwait is building a maritime city inland the desert known as Sea City. With intriguing trends and population increased building, new cities has become a necessity. To cater the everyday needs of the masses, in many countries around the world, new cities are being constructed. When we are talking about construction, the Middle East takes things to the next level, and today we will be discussing a maritime city that is being constructed in Kuwait. Kuwait's economy is the world's 20th largest by GDP per capita. Petroleum and maritime activities contribute a major share of the country's economy. Kuwait is one of the richest countries in the world. The Kuwaiti dinar is the highest valued unit of currency in the world. Flanked by powerful neighbors like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Iran, Kuwait's strategic location and massive oil reserves make it one of the world's richest countries per capita. You will be amazed to know that Kuwait holds one of the largest reserves of oil and gas in the world, amounting to an estimated total of 101.5 billion barrels, apart from being positioned in the top 10 of the largest oil producers globally. Now, after discussing Kuwait's economy, we can say that there are not many countries in a position favorable enough to construct a new city. While some new cities are built to become new political centers, some are positioned to become new hubs of logistics, and others are designed to become new epicenters of trade, finance, or technology. They all share one common ambition, to be long-term engines of economic growth. However, the city we will be talking about is just a little different. Sabah al Ahmad Sea City is the name of this city, and the most astounding aspect of this city is that every resident will have access to the beach. The question that arises is why they chose such an approach for building a new city, as the engineering problems they will encounter will be immense. So, let us explore the background. Kuwaiti citizens become rich in the 1908s after overwhelming sales of crude oil. Since rich people need luxurious spaces to live, Kuwait lacked the space as its 105 mile coastline was already occupied. The desert area is unsuitable for construction, and the climatic conditions are also intense. So. Instead of overpopulating the coastline, one idea was to extend the water channels deeper into the country. Shawaik and Al Quran were the two sites selected for construction. Unfortunately, right before execution, Kuwait was under ambush. Iraqi forces started invading Kuwaiti soils. After the outrage ended, the country was not in a condition viable enough for building a new costly city, and environmental imbalance also impacted the country. The Kuwaiti oil fires became a worldwide discussed phenomenon. And the country had to spend almost $1.5 billion just for extinguishing these blatant fires. These fires usually arose due to the inflammation of oil wells in the country. If you are interested in knowing about these fires, you can find a lot of material online. The construction of this city involved excavating millions of tons of sand. The excavated sand was washed and then used to build up the land for residential development. The land is being built up above projected sea levels to protect people and property from flooding. The first immense natural challenge that the engineers face is the algae growth in the channels. A circulation mechanism was designed, or otherwise, the city would just become a foul-smelling algae dweller. This mechanism involves manipulating the tidal flow that would result in water circulation. There are two natural tidal creeks at the site, and 50% of the 6,400 HA of land or development is salt marsh. To create the beachfront development space, it was required to take seawater up to 5 kilometers inland and then back out to the Arabian Gulf, whilst maintaining its quality. Circumstantial evidence shows that this was an immense issue, and the mechanism designed to resolve these issues must be highly imaginative. Controlling the water flow to maintain optimum circulation was another major challenge, as residents were supposed to swim in the channels without any trouble. Another thing that was to be taken under consideration was the water dominance that could affect the structure and shape of the channels in turn damaging the surrounding buildings. Complex computer modeling was used, and additional channels were created to cater to the areas where water flow was immense. The idea behind building such a city was quite contrary to Dubai's land reclamation projects. Instead of creating land and water, Kuwait brought water into the land, and the project is continuing to expand as the country plans to house around 250,000 people in the city. This city, unlike other cities, would not be a diverse habitat involving world-class trading attractions. Rather, it focuses majorly on providing every resident with access to the ocean. The city sets a high standard for waterside development in the Middle East, and is the first inland waterside development in Kuwait, and the largest in the Gulf region. In the end, the question that is left unanswered is that, can we turn the tide? Well, we don't know about us, but you can surely turn the tides for us by hitting the subscribe button. Do let us know which aspect of the city fascinated you the most in the comments section down below. 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button because we'll be back with more amazing content in the near future. Until then, peace.